Yeah, right out there, a hair right. See them all out there floating? Yep. Facing come on, away. come on, high, high, high. Got to keep it up high. Oh, he hit it. Nice job. What was super different about this day is that we set aside a time. We were like, who, who, who's one guy you'd like to fish with? And both of us said Dave Dinkert. Like, you go fishing with Dave Dinkert, you're going to learn a dozen things about the Everglades that you didn't know. Left, 11 o'clock, going into the hole, okay. redfish. Come on, come on, come on, drop it, drop, drop. You just ate it. Nice shot, man. Oh! Yeah! <laughs> come on, come on. Oh! He ate it. He ate it. He ate it. Nice, baby. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I thought you said you had to. I got him. Relax. Oh! Dude, Relax. he just ripped my boat off. Oh! <laughs> awesome. Look at that big boy. The Hawks K Saltwater Experience, presented by Yellowfin, with Captain Tom Rowland and Captain Rich Tudor. So, what do you think, Dave? Right over to Flamingo area, or what are you thinking? Yeah, let's go to let's go to Flamingo. We should get over there about the time of the tide chain. And uh, we'll see what's going on. The high barometric pressure here and the wind out of the north. We're not going to have a lot of water over there, so we're going to squeeze the fish down. Good. Makes for good fishing. I've always wanted to fish with Dave Dinkert. Dave Dinkert is a guy that he's got a reputation. He has certainly beat us in a lot of tournaments and certainly won a lot of tournaments. And I've always wondered what it would be like, like what goes on in his boat? Well, it was cool as, you know, and when I ask around about, you know, people that know Flamingo, Dave is, you know, top of the list. He, he, he makes a living over there, uh, knows a lot of fishing everywhere, but boy, he is one of the best there ever is, is fishing the Flamingo. And, you know, it was a little chilly that day, so, you know, we had a good ride over to Flamingo. Um, left from Hawks Cay here, um, kind of ran some of the banks, so we had an easy ride over. And when we got there, you know, it was interesting to see. I was just wondering, you know, where is he going to go? You know, I've certainly spent a lot of days over there and know the area well, but he's still over there, you know, almost every every day. So three fish, snook, trout, redfish yeah. right off the bat. That's pretty good. Got got his finally little, get one to bite. Got his little brother right here. Looks pretty similar. What do you guys got there, a pair of singles? A pair of singles. Take them any way we can get them. Yay, right on. Yeah. I think that's a fish. Yeah. Seemed like the bottom, but it's a fish for sure. Ooh, that's Probably the best fish. one of the day. That's a big fish. That's going to be a nice snook. That's a soft bite. That's a good one. Yes, sir. No wonder Dave Dinkert wins all these tournaments. Just get lucky every so often. Yeah, oh, that's that. what I thought. That's, all these years, that's what I thought was happening. Yep. Just, that's the luckiest guy there is. Dave's always been super friendly and real nice to both of us, and that's one of the reasons why we have so much respect for him, because he operated in a very competitive environment, and he was always really friendly, even helpful. But still, there's a difference between, you know, fishing right next to someone and actually being on the boat. And I have always wondered what went on on Dave Dinkert's boat, as I wonder what goes on on all these other guys' boats that we fish with. You know the ones that their customers love them, they catch a lot of fish, and it happens year after year after year after year. I mean, super consistent with those two things. Their customers come back and once, you know, Dave Dinkert's got a schedule uh, full of repeat customers. So it was really cool to get up there. By 10 o'clock, we had caught so many fish. Redfish, uh, snook, trout, just all kinds of stuff. Yeah, and now it's time to make a move. The tide had changed a little bit. There was this kind of window of, well, let's take advantage of this, this calm time. Let's slide over to this other area and start to sight fish. It's a snook. I got, there's a fish in the hole. Left side of the holes. See his tail sticking there? I got his facing right. Yeah, facing, facing, facing left. left. Facing left. Go ahead, see, him. see if you can get him from here. Probably need don't a little. Move, don't move. Oh, that's don't a redfish, dude. I think. Go right now, just snuff. Keep it up high. Just move it. Just keep moving it. Keep moving it. Okay, swim it, swim it, swim it. Turn. Got him. Got him. Good job. Yes. How do you know that? That was awesome. <laughs> that was awesome. Eat? Yeah. That was awesome. I that was that. a good feed there. Thought, yeah. Like right on the nose. Yeah. Dude, that was fun. <laughs> I like it when you can see him so yep. clear like yep. that. He knew. He he knew the time of year and the conditions we had, it was one of those, you know, after the cold front came through, it was starting to warm up, and it wasn't just that the wind died down, but you could just feel the, the radiant temperature from the sun just warming that water. 
and he went over this area where I was very surprised that that's where we were looking because really fished around there but never seen snook in there and he knew that they were going to come in there with those conditions. I'm surprised we drug that fish closer to us and wow. he still ate. Yeah, yeah I know. But well, the first cast I came right. across his but tail. That, he ate a shrimp. Yeah, but the shrimp suspended there so he yeah. could kind of pick it up. Wow. You got groups of singles in here, groups of multiples. You know, as we were pulling through there, I was like, hmm, this is, this is strange. I would have never thought to look here because we were kind of deep, you know, we weren't on any kind of channel edge or anything like that. It was just this, you know, random flat area. But sure enough, man, there is a snook right there. And it wasn't just one, I mean, a bunch of them. Dude, Dave, that is so cool, man. Nice. He's kind of cold. You can feel the mm -hmm. temperature on him. They're definitely going to be warming up here shortly, You know, it's though. funny. When we got here, it felt like the water was was um just push them right warmer just push than the air hard. there you go look at him get under the water there man good feed right there that was fun man that is fun oh here he comes here he comes here he nice he job man right that nice. was beautiful Fine. guiding there <laughs> that was good i had no idea where they were at. that was a good shot The Hawks K Saltwater Experience, presented by Yellowfin, is brought to you in part by Hawks K Resort. Find what lures you. Lawrence, America's number one fish finder. B&W Trailer Hitches, towing adventure. Mercury Marine, go boldly. St. Croix Rods, the best rods on earth. Yeti, built for the wild. And by Ameritrail Trailers. Daiwa, Marathon, Power Pole, Reflex Boat Decking, and Vibe. So what we were doing in the afternoon was in total contrast to what we did in the morning. Uh, the morning, the light was lower. We really couldn't see them. The water was a little dirtier, and it was uh, it was almost a waste of time to try to see them. We need to cast aggressively and make lots of casts to, to catch those fish, and that worked great. And then we totally switched gears. We went to an area where the water was crystal clear, and we had the sun up. You know that 10 to, 10 to 2 o'clock, right where the sun was at its highest point, and the visibility was great, and blue sky, and just could see everything. And in that situation, if we saw the fish, we had a chance. I don't think if, if, if we had any kind of conditions less than, you know, a little bit of clouds or, or, or the water was a little cl cloudy, we would not have seen those fish. They were hard to see even yeah. in perfect conditions. But when we finally got dialed in and we had that nice window of, of, of perfect sunshine, we could see those snook laying there. And it had to be precise. I mean, if you were behind them, if you were out here, you weren't getting a bite. We had to put it right in front of their face. Where your rod's pointing, Rich, as far as you can cast it, those two fish going away. Right there? A little bit, a hair to the right, right there. Way out there. Uh, wiggle it, wiggle it. They're to the left of you by 10 feet. Wiggle it. Oh, here he comes, here he comes. Here, here. Nice he job, man. Right that right was beautiful on. guiding there. <laughs> that was good. I had no idea where they were at. That was a good shot. That's what the suspending lure was going to do for you. Yeah. It's interesting in a situation like that, you know, there's a number of shots you're going to get, right? You got a window. If we'd gone in there in the morning, those fish weren't there. They showed up at a certain time, you know, probably about midday. We literally only had the sunlight in the right position so we could see them for a couple hours. You know, there was just this window of time. You can't go back there every day and see that. Right. Where they're ready to bite, crystal clear water. It was just, it's a really cool scenario and it just made it extra special that we hit that window just perfect. It's interesting, the uh, red seem to be feeling us further away than the snook are. Well, they're harder to see because they're down a little bit. Yeah, that water's beautiful. So just a few years ago, this is all turtle grass in here. Mm-hmm. And then this eel grass has come back. Well, we have a mix of grass on a turtle with the, with the needle grass, but it's trying to make a good recovery. So we were able to capitalize on a lot of opportunities. We were able to not capitalize on some opportunities too. You know, those fish are, they're smart, they get some pressure, and they're definitely not easy. So it has to, everything has to be right. 
but it sure does help when you got somebody like Dave behind you pointing out every single one. And you know, funny thing about fishing with Dave is like, if you have attention deficit disorder or something <laughs> like that, he might not be the best person to go fishing with because he's like, he's like, okay, there's a fish at 11, and there's also a fish at one, and three, and four, and seven. You pick the one you want to go for, and you're like, wait, what? Yeah, right out there, a hair right. See them all out there floating? Yep. Okay. Too slow. Facing come on, away. come on, high, high, high. Gotta keep it up high. Come in, Tom. Rich. Oh, he hit it. Nice job. That was a great feed. The other two were seemed to be happier, but this guy seemed to be hungrier. Wow. What a day. Hmm. You gotta take advantage of weather like this. I tell you yes, what. Man. This was a great call. Oh, there he goes. Sorry, Dave. Good release. That's almost a Look beaner. Look at him laying right there. But what do you think, Dave? You want me to, want to switch with me and go up there and take a shot yourself? Yeah, let's try that. Get up there and See do it. I still have it. <laughs> it was just great to be out there. You know, all three of us like that. It's it's kind of a really rare situation for for one or two fishing guides to get together ever. For three to get together on the same day and go out. That's even more rare. First of all, that everybody's got the day off at the same time. Secondly, it just it just doesn't happen that much. You might see somebody at the boat ramp every single day, but you might fish around that guy, be kind of partners with that guy, share information and stuff like that, but you may never share the boat. There's a fish. Well, it didn't take you long. Nice job, man. Way to go, Dave. Nice, man. Good work. <sighs> Can't believe they're still eating. They're hungry. Now you were just flipping inside a pothole. You didn't see that one, right? No, but the one that took off up here. You see how we're getting shallower, and then they're going to start getting in here. This, Come this here. is a great spot Fell. right here. A lot of potholes up here. I know which way the water is. They like to just <laughs> flop and go right back in the water. I don't blame them. Tom, you got to get a grip. Yeah, I don't like, <laughs> to, I don't like to smash them, man. <laughs> Cradle them. See that mud there? I think I lost my gulp too. So right? do, you, uh, do you do you get to fish yourself much or are you mostly guiding these days? Mostly guiding, my fish, you know, a couple dozen times a year. Well, there is a balance there, you know, to get out and hook a fish mm -hmm. yourself every now and then. You got then. to, it's just like therapy. That's uh, funny, I'm always more comfortable actually guiding, but go towards that naturally, but man, it is fun to get up there and yep. bend the rod myself. It is. Plus, that makes you a little bit more humble about you. That's know, exactly what I was going to say. <laughs> like, you know, hey, it is a little, sometimes it is hard. Just yeah. A couple more muds in front of us here. Yeah, see that in that hole? Yeah. Dave. All right. He's a wicked well, hook shot, too, man. They are. And just a little bit deeper. A snooky. What flavor you got there? A little snook. All right. Land him right over here, Dave. I think he's coming at us. Well, these guys are all just as healthy as they can be, man. Just super bright yellow colors on their fins. I fished with my father back in 1970 was the first time we fished the park. And my brother and I and my dad would fish quite a bit. So it got to the point where my dad didn't want to go with us anymore. So he would drop my brother and I off on a Friday afternoon in Alamorada with the boat. And we would have till Sunday afternoon to fish and he would come back down out of Miami and pick us up. So from that point, we only had 12 gallons of gas. And back then those two strokes used a lot of fuel. So we pushed everywhere. We pulled flats, you know, this countless flats all through Florida Bay, and that's how I learned it. And then you learn the different areas of fish, you, you get to get an idea how the fish move in and out, and at what times of the year the water levels are high or low, and how those fish move through those levels. It was a great experience back then. It was funny, when I married my wife, she didn't like fishing. So I told her, we're at the fish, or <laughs> it's not gonna work. So we would go out fishing every weekend. So she really got into it, and she was really good at it. And then in uh, 
After that, we had our daughter, Brooke, and she had to go fishing with us because that's all we like to do. So she went with us at the young age of two. We would take her out in the boat. So she's been fishing her whole entire life. She uh, married Richard Black seven years ago. He's a guy in the Keys, and he grew up in the Keys, and he loves fishing. So between the two of them, they fish all the time. Now our granddaughter, who is five and a half years old, she likes fishing. So it runs in the family. It goes from generation to generation. Probably 70% of my fishing is in the Flamingo area, Florida Bay Flamingo. Okay, and the other 30% is either bone fishing or in tarpon season, I'm tarpon fishing. And um, I still tarpon fish in the park quite a bit, so it's a great place to fish. I really enjoy it. I fish about 18 to 19 tournaments a year. I like the competition, I like to compete against the other anglers, and I like the guides I compete against. And we win a few, lose a lot more than we ever win, but it's a lot of fun. I really enjoy it. Oh, snook, snook, right, lose the right, to the right, stop, top, Got front. Got him. Back in the uh, late 90s and early 2000s, I would fish against Tom and Rich in the tournaments. And we, it was friendly, and we talked to each other, we came back in and see what's going on. But um, now, this is the first time we actually fish together, which was a lot of fun, really enjoyable. It makes my job so much easier when Rich and Tom can see the fish, make the shots, cast the fish, and you know, reel them in, so. Left, 11 o'clock, going into the okay. hole, redfish. Come on, Tom, Tom, come on, drop it, drop, drop. He just ate it. Nice shot, man. Went through one. In case you didn't know, Tommy ate it. <laughs> <laughs> I saw him. I just got to say Actually, it. I didn't see him eat it. I just saw the whole, the whole jig just disappeared. The, the fence flare? Yep. I've had countless hours on the water at Flamingo. And over the years, like any other job, you understand how things start to work and you put it together. So you can tell how fish move, how, when they come out of the Gulf onto the flats, uh, what part of the flats they want to be in, what basins, especially in the wintertime, are cooler, okay, or hotter in the wintertime than other times of the year. And you know how those fish want to come in and lay there, warm up, get to the point where they want to feed and feed. So it's just, it's just time on the water. It's a lot of time on the water. So Dave, will you find that the certain, like if you GPS these certain potholes, that they, fish are always in certain ones at the right yeah. depth? they move in and out depending on what the tide's doing. Uh -huh. How deep the water, water depth actually, not so much tide, but water depth. But if the water depth is right, they'll be in the same holes? Kind of, or the same proximity within mm -hmm. 100 feet. Thanks, Rich. I mean, that's Tom. Yeah. No problem, Roger. I mean, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you. So this year, more than ever, it's important to support American-made companies. I look around for companies that make products uh, that are made in the USA, that are high-quality products, and B&W Trailer Hitches is one that I found that I really enjoy and really trust. Uh, they provide a product that's, that's the highest quality trailer hitch in the industry, and it truly connects me to my passion of fishing. I hook up my brand new uh, Yellowfin boat here, and we're getting ready to go fishing. And uh, you know, I want to make sure that that connection to that boat and my truck is secure, safe, and high quality. And B&W really provides that. Um, I believe in the company. They they are passionate about the outdoors. Um, they're passionate about their products. If you want to check them out, go to TackleDirect.com. Or if you want to see any of the gear that Tom and I use, follow the link below. The Hawks K Saltwater Experience, presented by Yellowfin, is brought to you by Yellowfin, only in a Yellowfin. Hook. Tackle Direct, the world's premier fishing outfitter. Buff, built for ultimate sun protection. Waypoint, streaming the best hunting and fishing series. Download the app today. And by Bruno and Rod Holders. Nikon. Wiley X, Lithium Pros, and Golden Boat Lifts. Oh, there you go. Nice. Snook. Well, you can see them right in that pothole. Mm -hmm. Now, Dave, is the are they in the potholes just because it's a depression, 
or is there something else reason that why they're in the potholes? They're in the, the pothole, the ambush, everything. They don't want to lay on the grass because they'll get the parasites on their belly, so they lay in the potholes with the sand and the shell in there. Really? That, yeah. The, the keep from getting the parasites, and it's also an ambush point. So if they're laying on the grass, the parasites are in the grass and it gets into yes, the, into the fish scales? Yes, they'll get more parasites on them in the grass because the scales on their belly are the smallest of all their scales. Wow. That is very interesting. And, you know, we noticed before, somebody showed us how flat the snook's belly is and they can just literally lay yep. flat on the bottom. They can. That's interesting. I've never thought about that, about that there's a reason with those parasites that <laughs> why they'd want to stay in the the white spots. What was super different about, about this day is that we set aside a time we were like, who, who's one guy you'd like to fish with? And both of us said Dave Dinkert. Like, you go fishing with Dave Dinkert, you're gonna learn a dozen things about the Everglades that you didn't know. And he would be, he's definitely somebody that I would really, really like to fish with. And, and man, I'm so glad we made it happen because you learned a lot, I learned a lot. We had a great time. And all in all, just a fabulous day up there in the Everglades with, with Dave Dinkert. That's some of the best sight fishing for snook I've ever seen. That was really good. It's pretty cool, isn't it? Lots of fish, mm -hmm. um, schools, singles, I mean, a little bit of everything. And they, yeah. they were uh, they were fun too, because it was, you know, they weren't like absolute layups. You had to, you know, put it in there just right. Yeah. Well, it's not like this every day, but when it gets calm like that and the weather turns over in the middle of the day, boy, those fish really turn on. It's hard for me to believe Saltwater Experience has been on for 17 years, and you can find every show for free on Waypoint TV. Go to waypointtv.com and download the app. Well, Dave, that was an awesome day, man. It, it really was. was. A lot of fun. Glad you got to catch a couple of fish, and we got to see what it was like to I'm glad be you with guys, you on the back end of the boat. I'm glad I could show you the fish. That was pretty cool. Watch, you know, laid up snook there and redfish.